जने चित सा मित्रम वनुते जने चित रिग्वेदा टेन पॉइंट टू सेवन पॉइंट वन टू टेन पॉइंट टू सेवन पॉइंट वन टू मित्रम मिदु स्नेहने मित्रम मिदु स्नेहने दर्स अ फ्रेंड वनुते इज व्री वरणे व्रिंग वरणे काका गगंग व्रिंग वरणे The root for जने इज जनी प्रादुर्भाव जनी प्रादुर्भाव Now the meaning of it is सा is he वनुते चूज मित्र हर फ्रेंड सो हियर हर फ्रेंड मीन दट लाइफ पार्टनर सखा सप्तपदी भव यू हेव सीन सखा इज अ फ्रेंड सो इन द सेम वे Mitram is also a friend. She chooses her friend means her life partner among jane chit, among those who are willing to become her friend. That is, uh, we can all call them as suitors. So there are many people who are willing to become her friend, want to marry her and become her life partner, and among them she chooses her life partner. Yeah, I heard of something. What is known as swayamvara. Hmm. so it is similar to that so the final word is with the bride the final word is with the bride groom also will, of course can take the decision but most of the time that option is given to the bride so that is the place what she has got in vedic society She has got all the freedom. She has got the got all the freedom to choose to choose her life partner. This is a very progressive thing. Particularly in the Indian context, even today, two thousand sixteen, if their children come home and tell the parents that okay, this is a person I have chosen for my as a life partner. in particular the girl even today they make a big issue of it even today elsewhere the condition is different there it has become more a contract than a life partnership and a friendship and they go for dating and polygamy polyandry they are all allowed it's a free and permissible society elsewhere in india it is not so but it's totally the opposite side of it the other end there also the relationship is decided even today by the parents most of the time and if the children come with uh, a proposal or with an offer with uh, some information that uh, i find this person suitable for my life uh, very rarely parents say is it so okay bring him we'll discuss and see if it is right fine go ahead no they won't say so they say that we belong to this caste and the person is uh, belonging to another caste and the whole caste system is uh, unnatural and unfortunate so they stick on to that and they don't allow and in many groups they have got this uh, horoscope and other things so they depend on all those other things rather than the wish of the bride the wish of the groom that's the sorry aspect of it it is their life allow them to choose their partner if something goes wrong it's their responsibility as parents and elders it shall be our responsibility to give them some good guidance it's our duty to bring them up in such a way that they will be in a position to choose their life partner rightly that's all it's their life we should give them little freedom so such a concept is not there uh, at this end in india and it's totally at the other end in other parts of the world the balanced thing is in the veda it says 
so this balance you have to understand it's their life allow them to choose but that doesn't mean uh, what you call a swetcha you have heard that word swetcha mm-hmm. swatantra is different swatantra is freedom swetcha is uh, no bounds so it's not such a thing it's a balance okay you choose we are with you we will help you we will guide you so that's the right uh, balancing point and that's what is it is said in this uh, veda mantra sa mitram anute jane chit elsewhere the relationship between a male and a female has been reduced to that of an animal the relationship between husband and wife is not just physical of course physical relationship is there but it goes beyond that it's a physical relationship it's a mental relationship it's a spiritual relationship between husband and wife these dimensions are not there elsewhere other than india in india it is there but they are not following it this are all uh, some uh, extreme uh, things what are happening in the world is just for physical satisfaction they go for this uh, living <coughs> they go for dating now dating and living uh, will not build up the mental and the spiritual relationship between a male and a female physical relationship will happen that is just uh, animal like in animals that's what happens if the physical relationship is over that's the end of it they begin uh, issues <coughs> they begin progeny and get lost even in animal world if i am to say there are many species where they have this uh, family type of living that is one male always lives with one female and they will have children the whole group moves together and in some bird species also we do have it but in human relationship that is a must because they have to develop the physical relationship the mental relationship the spiritual relationship also but that angle is uh, forgotten in some places we find physical and mental but spiritual aspect is most of the time forgotten everywhere only when a person is able to develop this spiritual relationship with his partner or her partner the happiness of joint life will be the maximum now this a person can understand only when the experience it it's just a statement now but if they really work for it and achieve it yes that will be the best both will have so much of satisfaction at the physical level at the mental level and also at the spiritual level so this is what is said in the vedas they are not against sexual relationship between a male and a female but they have got their own parameters within which they have to achieve it yeah. it is not a free and permissible thing at the same time there is no restriction also a balance is what they speak of and that balance is what uh, elsewhere they call it as yoga you must have heard of it samatvam yoga uchyate mm. that's in gita samatvam yoga uchyate yoga is that balance equipoise equilibrium neither the right extreme nor the left extreme so usually i give the example of uh, a bicycle bicycle when we ride it if i uh, slant towards left too much i fall if it is to the right side also i fall so i have to balance it and only then the cycle can move it's neither to the right nor to the left it's a balance that's required in the same way life is like that we have to balance at one point we are very sensual at the other point full obstinence obstinence is also not uh, natural too much of uh, sensuality is also not natural a balance between the two this is what is called as sayama sayama is the word what they use sayama sayama is sayama in yoga it has got uh, slightly a different dimension 
here when i'm saying sayama it is control over our sensual organs control not suppression you see there's a lot of difference between the two many people explain sayama as suppression mm. i'm not speaking of suppression i'm speaking of control taming it should be under our control it's not bad mm. but it goes out of bounds yes it could be totally dangerous sayama is having control over it mahodaya mm. one question ah, sharma ji uh, please if this if vedas prescribe free will uh, then how did all the caste system not the caste system even the brahmana system brahmana system is okay i have been telling that brahmana system is purely not caste system but it is varana system varana system as varana system brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra that is excellent and this brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra what we have got is a natural classification i stress it it is a natural classification and not man made say in any society over a period this classification happens on its own hmm. say the usual example what i give is say some 50 or 60 people we are uh, going for a picnic in a bus let me say in some vehicle we are all uh, going for a picnic so when we are going on the picnic say we find some uh, strange flowers we find some strange things we find some strange animals something like that so somebody asks a question hey what is this this is so beautiful flower i have not seen to which category it belongs then one in the group will say hey this is such and such a flower i know it this like this he gives the information now next time when there is a question who we will address that question to okay. the same person same person i had given an answer earlier hey hello this is it what is this can you explain so he explains for 4 5 6 <coughs> then throughout the picnic he becomes the answering machine <coughs> without anybody telling without mm-hmm. anybody telling without <coughs> anybody uh, telling him you answer it no it becomes something automatic and whenever there is a question we immediately approach that person and call him an intelligent person a person who knows things okay then we go to the picnic and in the picnic say there is a river bank so you stop the bus and get down and just wash your legs and face uh, hands in the river and one person unfortunately slips into the river and shouts oh help me help me help me there are 60 people on the bank will all the 60 jump and save him no or will he discuss you jump you save no a few people will automatically on the spur of the moment they just jump into the river and save that person Mm. there is no discussion nobody said you jump but they just jump and save that person automatically mm. that is the second category okay then we all sit for uh, taking breakfast or lunch somewhere okay then a few people a few people will be capable of distributing the food what is there to all the persons equally say there is a person who is not up to that level so those who are sitting in the first in the row they get sufficient as he comes to the end of the row there will be nothing mm-hmm. that is he will not be able to assess and he will distribute it wrongly okay the next time when he takes the uh, vessel which contains the breakfast and wants to serve then people will say you please don't serve because those who are in the beginning of the road they will get it and the end of the road they will not get it keep it there you come and sit down we will not allow you you give it to some xy because xy is clever enough to distribute it to all the people in the row plus something extra he will also save in the vessel for some people who want little extra he will serve it so always when there is a serving we call those persons and other persons we avoid hmm. naturally it happens naturally nobody says what is what mm-hmm. now there are some people who neither can explain or answer your questions 
there are some people who can never jump into the river and save anyone and there are some people who will not participate in distributing their food but whenever the bus stops they get on to the top bring down the carpets bring down the things utensils and arrange them for them to serve and once it's all over they put the carpets back onto the bus and the vessels they wash it and keep it in the dicky and they come and sit on comfortable mm-hmm. this also happens voluntarily nobody says you do it now who are they are able to identify the one who answered the question is the brahmin class and the one who saved they are the kshatriya class and those who distributed well they are the vaishya class and those who gave the infrastructural services they became the shudra class now a simple question all the four type of people we need for the picnic to be successful and enjoyable mm-hmm. we cannot leave anyone everyone's contributions is equally valuable so between brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra nobody is superior nobody is inferior all are equal and the contributions of all the four put together has been responsible for the successful trip successful picnic so this is how we have to understand brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra it's natural whether you want it or not it happens in a group mm. we call it as group dynamics group dynamics in the group dynamics this classification happens naturally whereas a caste system doesn't happen so in the caste system somebody says you belong to this caste i belong to this caste i am superior you are inferior this is all man made and that is the exploiters mm. the exploiters some people have created this caste system. this is anti vedic anti human varna system is natural any group any group any society you take in any society we have got some people who are intellectual class they get identified as intellectuals automatically and there are some people who are belong to the protective class commanding class maybe you call them as police you call them as military you call them as paramilitary anything then you got some people who save natural resources and distribute the products of it <coughs> to everyone equitably and we do have some people who participate in developing the infrastructure what are they who are they intellectual class the martial class the business class and the last one is the service class brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra fine mm. it happens naturally in any society you find these categories but it comes to caste system it is not universal it changes from place to place and is all man made to exploit the weaker people in the society it is something thrust upon the weaker people by the strong people so the strong people take hold of the situation we call it as not human society but jungle law jungle law you understand yeah that's what happens in the animal world survival of the fittest so one who is strong will rule whether they have the capacity or not is not decided only the strength is the parameter but that cannot be the parameter in a human society in a human society is something else it's not physical it is physical mental intellectual spiritual all these dimensions are there in human society but in animal world it's just physical anything to rule or if it is sex it is just physical so so much of difference is there between animal society and human society so in human society every person has got their own thoughts visions ways of looking at uh, the world they have got their own attitudes aptitudes so if all these are considered then each one of them needs their own freedom freedom is okay because freedom is always associated with duties mm. duties and rights both balanced what we call it as freedom but you would say free thing that is as good as the animal world so this difference you should know it's a very thin line between that 
So here the Sahabitram Anute Jane Chit, it very clearly says that you have got that freedom, at the same time you have got the responsibility. It is a responsibility and freedom, duty plus rights. So this difference you have to understand, and caste system is unnatural, Varana system is natural. They may not use the words Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, but these four categories you find anywhere. Even in tribal group you find these people. There will be one headman in a tribal group. Who is that headman? He is a Kshatriya. So he commands everyone what to do, what not to do. And for him there will be some advisors. Who are those advisors? They are the Brahmin group, if I am to call it with that name. And we do have some people who help them in distributing, in collecting things. Even in a tribal group, they are all Vaishyas. And we got some people who serve them, who prepare the infrastructure for them. If they choose and uh, keep it ready in a basket, okay, they carry it on to their uh, uh, hut. Okay, they are nothing but Shudra class. You want all the four, it happens. It's natural. They may not use the word Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. We are not particular about the word, but we are particular about what those words signify. So that's what we have got. Mm. So, caste system is totally unnatural and unethical and inhuman. Varna system is natural. So, there is always a gap between the two. There is always a difference between the two. We should not get confused between the two. Uh, so, uh, there is next, no... Uh, tell me. Uh, sorry, Shamaji, one uh, point. No, no problem. Tell, uh, tell me, tell me. So, there is no... In the Vedas, there is no such thing as... Um, I am not saying Brahmana should get banned to Brahmanas. I know that that is man-made. But there is right. no such thing as uh, some people should be with some people and not with other people and all that. This, this no such discriminations are not there. It's completely free will. No such discrimination. Yes. And everybody is interested in their welfare as well as the welfare of the society. The two aims are always there together. They are not disassociated. But in the modern society, we are worried about our own thing and what happens to society in the long run? No, we are not bothered. So that is not there. Okay, I want to take care of myself. Excellent. But while doing so, please don't create problem for others doing the same thing. You be selfish. Fine. I am not against you being selfish. But during your selfishness, don't kill the selfishness of others. I think you understand the difference between the two. Others are also selfish, as you are. So respect their selfishness. <laughs> I have to use the very word selfishness. No problem. You respect their selfishness, mm. you achieve your selfishness. Excellent. So that results in a harmonious society. But what happens is, for my selfishness, I don't bother about the other selfishness, I don't respect it at all. But the whole society comes down and there will be a lot of chaos. That's a problem what we are facing today. I am selfish. We are not against it. But for your selfishness, at what cost you are doing is a question we ask. Hmm. It is the cost of the natural resources. If it is the abuse of the natural resources, it is at the cost of others getting into trouble, your selfishness is not permitted. Because it is at a higher cost. So that is how Vedas look at it. They are not against selfishness, but it has to be without creating hindrance and problems to anyone else. You have to safeguard them and have your thing. So it is a beautiful balancing point. Mm. You are not supposed to snatch. Magridaha, I have already told you. Magridaha, mm -hmm. don't snatch. You get it? If you start snatching, tomorrow if somebody snatches what you have, you cannot complain. Because how did you get? You snatched it from others. So you snatch it from others. And if somebody snatches, you have to say, okay. Because they have done the same thing what you have done. So finally what happens? If snatching becomes the rule, the whole human society becomes an animal-like world. Don't do it. Don't do it. There is a balance. Everywhere you go into the Vedas, Everywhere you find such balancing things. Mm. Okay, next. 
if you still have any question you can ask me note it down ask me in the class you are free to ask any number of questions the beautiful thing is vedas will answer every question <laughs> a genuine question and also sometime uh, people ask uh, uh, tricky questions and they want to ask some uh, what do you call uh, uh, questions with head weight even such questions are answered here calmly coolly it's a wonderful thing what we have got in the vedas so to ask questions you have got full freedom anyway suprajaha suprajaha prajabhihi syam suprajaha prajabhihi syam ಜಾಯಿಸ್ ಜನಿ ಪ್ರಾದುರ್ಭಾವೇ ಅದು ಖರ್ಚಿ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಬೇಕಾಯ್ತದೆ ಜನಿ ಪ್ರಾದುರ್ಭಾವೇ ಜನಿ ಪ್ರಾದುರ್ಭಾವೇ ಪ್ರಾದುರ್ಭಾವೇ ಜಾಹ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಜಾ that is it could be a litter of the dog also so many puppies that's all ja pigs <coughs> they also give birth to offsprings that's also ja any animal which gives birth and what has taken birth it's all ja but we human beings are not supposed to be just ja we have to be praja pra means that progeny which is good and best so it is indirectly tells us we as human beings can plan our children can plan not the timing i am telling not the number i am telling the quality of the children also we can plan we do have different we call it as samskaras mm-hmm. samskara means what we have to do and improve at the spiritual level now we have got what is known as garbha dhana samskara garbha dhana samskara like that we have got 16 samskaras i'll explain it in a different session all the 16 samskaras so this garbha dhana samskara it is a plan wherein the parents wish the children to have a certain quality quality i'm not speaking of the gap between two children i am not speaking of the time when they have to beget the children number of children they are all on the physical side of it but what quality the child should have now that is decided in garbha dhana samskara they have got a lot of scope and is garbha dhana samskara is before copulating this a husband and wife before they meet to beget children they have to prepare themselves lot of preparations are there and all such things are explained in the garbhadhana samskara so depending on the preparation say in a male finally the sperm is formed and the sperm is a physical thing but it carries it carries the hereditary factors so in those hereditary factors we have got so many things which are <coughs> physical and which are also mental yeah. so all that put into in one capsule is what you call it as a sperm so it is a manufacturing of the sperm automatically sperm is manufactured in a male but here it is a controlled manufacture and details are given in the garbhadana samskara same way the womb in the case of a woman in the case of woman every month womb is formed okay they got the left ovary right ovary one from the left one from the right it's all signs i'm telling hmm. so every month is womb is formed automatically but in garbhadhana samskara they say while this womb is formed you follow these instructions and the quality of that ovum will be very high from the physical point of view and also from the 
intellectual point of view. So when this is done, it is like constructing a house. Now a tenant has to come to this house. By this sperm and ovum, they fertilize. So when they fertilize and when it becomes a zygote, that's what they call it as. A fertilized egg is a zygote. So once that zygote takes form, now under the cosmic law, a particular spirit will enter there and that is a birth for it. So what type of a spirit, that is what type of a soul has to enter and the sperm and ovum get fertilized, that depends upon the quality of the sperm and the ovum. So if the parents deliberately, if they follow certain rules and regulations, then the quality of the sperm and the ovum will be fine. And if that quality is of high quality, then the soul which enters into that will also be of a high quality. Mm. If it is of a low quality, it will be of a low quality. It depends on how you uh, create it, mm. how you create it. If that creation is automatic and if there is no deliberate intervention, okay, something happens, some soul will come and some children will be born. Mm. But if I deliberately, if I deliberately intervene and control the quality of the sperm and the ovum, and the construction of the zygote, that's the house, the residence, sharira indriya manas, for the soul. <coughs> if this is of the best quality, the soul what enters will deserve this and that soul has to be something which is noble and pious. Then we beget children who are not just ja, they are called as praja. Pra means the one which is excellent, highest in quality. It's not that 100% it will happen. It is the possibility. It increases the probability of such things. We don't have 100% control over things. But we do it in such a way that the probability of getting good children, getting very good progeny will increase to a very great extent when you work for it deliberately with knowledge. Then we get Praja. So when I say Praja, it means so. To that Praja, they add another Su also. Supraja, that is, it is doubled. That is not just we just good children. Good children is praja. We get excellent children. That is supraja. Even in that good, we have got the superlative. So let us beget very good children, excellent children. So how do you know that our children are excellent? If they are healthy more than us, they are healthy more than us, if they are intelligent more than us, if they are useful to the society more than us, yes we say they are better than us. So this we call it as getting, begetting very good progeny. If it is the other way, we call it as degeneration. So let there not be degeneration. Degeneration, our children become weaker, less intelligent and less useful. Most of the time, in an uncontrolled condition, there will be degeneration. Mm. Mm. Begetting, children is not big, but they are not as intelligent, as healthy and having longevity better than us. No, that goes down. That's degeneration. We are trying to deliberately generate good things, generate something which is of a higher quality than us. So we shall be so, we shall be praja, and we as praja beget supraja. We shall lead a very good life and we shall beget excellent children. Supraja prajabhisyam. Tarchif bekiti indo. Indo. This we remember in Garbhadhana Samskara and this we also remember again in Namakarna Samskara. Namakarna Samskara is naming ceremony. Christening. 
there also we remember this the first part is in garbhadana samskara and the second part is in the namakarna samskara so now explain those samskaras in detail i come back to this issue once again so suprajaha prajabhisyam yajurveda 8.53 8.53 one question sharma ji yes please so we learn that we cannot control what if we will have children what type of children we will have because everything is determined by our karma ah ha 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 here yeah. there is nothing which is predetermined what happens in future is not determined we have got always a scope we have got a freedom always to improve things now where karma happens that i will tell you as i was telling this sperm and ovum they fertilize together so at that point of fertilization the soul which enters into that yes there we have got that cosmic law i used that word specifically at that point we have got that karma but at the point of improving the quality of the sperm improving the quality of the ovum it should be under our control we can do it the best way and depending upon the quality of these two yes the soul enters we whose karma fits into it hmm. only at that point your karma theory works got my point hmm. so what type of a house that is sharira indriya manas you create physically that's under your control and depending upon the sharira indriya manas of a certain quality you prepare a soul whose karma phala fits into it will get into it and that we are not able to control that's a cosmic hmm and once that gets into okay we say the woman is carrying she is pregnant fine then 9 months will happen we are able to see the child physically when she begets the child after 9 months now we are able to see the quality of the product now from then on depending upon at what level the quality of it is we try to improvise further while it is a womb itself we try in pumsavana samskara and simantonaina samskara but what's the quality of the product we will not know then a little indication will be there but we'll know it once she actually delivers the child and from then on as the child grows we'll be able to understand what is the quality of it then also we intervene and improve the quality and there's a balance 13 samskaras garbhadana umsavana and simantonaina are three samskaras before birth birth onwards we got jata karma samskara namakarana samskara etc etc another 13 samskara hmm. and in that whatever soul that has come we try to improve the quality of it so totally when we take the all the 16 samskaras it is to improvise the quality of the soul which has come in it's a constant effort it's a constant effort and in all that the most of these out of the 16 more than 50% of it we are doing it when the child is hardly 2 to 3 years mm-hmm. within that half of it is done mm-hmm. because as a tender age when the age is tender to modify it to create some positive effect the probability is more it's tender but once it grows then the samskara is very less because the soul also <coughs> has to cooperate has to cooperate and say okay i am open to this you please transform me if it is blocks then we cannot do anything but that blocking will not be there when it is tender so maximum samskaras are done when the child is tender when it is in the womb so this is a beautiful scientific uh, thing what we have got you know i am going to uh, discuss about the samskaras i'll explain this in detail 
ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ನೌ ಯು ಹ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ದಿ ಹೋಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಿದ್ಧ ಅಂತ ಆರ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಫಲ ಇಟ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಓವರ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ then what all happens in the present life works that's what we call it as prarabdha karma the karma which has begun the point from where it has begun is that zygote hmm. the fertilized egg at that point karma phala works and that's not under our control what best we can do is we can create the sharira indriya manas in the best possible way and according to it we get that soul so which soul will enter which zygote okay that's not under our control hmm. <coughs> once that enters yes we can manipulate hmm. we can enter we can do what best we can with what is given what is given so if you want to get the best you create the best sharira indriya manas physically hmm. if you create the best you get the best if you do 80% you get 80% if you get 10% it is automatic you have no control you don't know what it is you are ignorant of it something will happen we don't know what it is but deliberately we can plan something we can plan something to certain extent and there there is no question of karma once that sperm and ovum fertilize at that point the karma phala of the soul which is getting into that works hmm and there is a cosmic law okay next sir so he deva ah yes please so can i just like you know to understand this one so you can prepare yourself first before ah. you even thinking the children so you create your body maintain it and everything exactly and yes. then think about the children and right then whatever you get it but if you ready for it mentally and physically then you get right. the better one spiritual also you had that also spiritual uh. yes 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 you have to plan that's what veda say you plan you become the uh, a person with good qualities mm-hmm. you improve yourself physically mentally and spiritually mm-hmm. and then think of children you are perfectly right that's exactly what i'm telling that's what i'm saying and once But they and once Until they born and they are tender like they are the way say that like the plant is a little you can turn right i did the way you want right yeah. so exactly. in a certain age you just give it to them basic root to exactly. build build the ground then they will it be start from the womb i tell you it starts from the womb pumsavana is training to the child in the womb simantonaina is also training to the child in the womb later okay it is one to one mm. when it is in the womb through the mother we give the training and how you have to give that is explained in pumsavan and simantonaina so this means ma- mom has a more responsibility exactly exactly Then... and only she can do it only she can do it nobody else that's why i respect women to a very great extent but if it's a failure then it should be this means like you know it goes to the mom too that mommy she did not train the way she also but for her to do that the husband has to help the people in the house also they have to cooperate and create such an environment then she will be able to do it best mm-hmm. it's not that every responsibility is on her of course she is the center of the whole process mm. she is the center but she alone cannot do it yes other people in the environment around her have to help her so that she can do the thing well she can achieve it and the benefit the first satisfaction of course is to the mom and others also will be very happy mm. what you said is right nice ha huh. what you said is the right thing and there's a point which i wanted to convey and i have caught it uh. <laughs> stuhi devam savitaram ಸ್ತುಹಿ ದೇವಂ ಸವಿತಾರಂ ಋಗ್ವೇದ ಸ್ತುಹಿ ಸ್ತುಹಿ ದೇವಂ ಸ್ತುಹಿ ದೇವಂ ಸವಿತಾರಂ ಸವಿತಾರಂ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಸವಿತಾರಂ ಸ್ತುಹಿ ದೇವಂ ಸವಿತಾರಂ ಋಗ್ವೇದ 6.1.1 
ऋग्वेद सिक्स पॉइंट वन पॉइंट वन स्तुहि देवम सवितारम ना व्हाट ऑल वी वर डिस्कसिंग सो फार इन द मॉडर्न साइंस दे कॉल इट एस जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग दे कॉल इट एस जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग सो दे स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस क्लोनिंग एंड दे स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस द लेटेस्ट थिंग व्हाट इज गोइंग ऑन इज द स्टेम सेल थ्योरी यू हैव हर्ड ऑफ इट Hmm. stem cells at the time of the birth uh, they preserve the stem cells and with these stem stem cells at a later date they are able to generate from these stem cells maybe a kidney maybe a wall of the heart maybe a part of the liver there's a basic material stem cells say in the womb from the stem cells only the different organs of the body are formed say from day one there will not be a brain there will not be a hands or lungs or the heart or whatever it is everything start from this stem cell and from this stem cell everything is grown so a part of the stem cell at the womb stage they take out and preserve it so using that at a later date they are able to manufacture the different organs of a person so that is the latest uh, technology that they are doing it stem cell so now these stem cells they preserve say tomorrow the person will have a kidney failure today the answer for that kidney failure is maybe dialysis mm. or maybe transplanting kidney from other person mm. but if it is a stem cell case then from the stem cell they generate the kidney they create an environment for the stem cell so the kidney will be generated and that kidney will be transplanted and it is 100% accepted by the body mm. if the kidney of some donor the body may accept or may not accept mm-hmm. but if from his own stem cell from her own stem cell if the kidney is formed it will easily accept it maybe a liver some dysfunctioning of the liver is there so from the same stem cells they are create a different environment and it generates the liver and that liver they transplant it and they become healthy again so that's the latest uh, concept is going on stem cells now what i mean to say is all this subject they come under genetic engineering genetic engineering now is genetic engineering what they are doing in the laboratory is most of the time physical in nature whereas the genetic engineering what we are going to understand in the vedas it is physical it is mental and also spiritual that's the beauty of it if it is one dimension what they are doing in the modern science latest i am telling as on date we call it as the state of the art the state of the art position is still physical in nature they are not able to tackle it at the mental level they are not able to tackle it at the spiritual level it's totally unknown but in vedas they have got that physical mental and spiritual also that's the beauty of it it's a far 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 better science it's not just some philosophy it's not some religious mantra which we chant and do this mangala arati mangala arati you know there's a camp for another thing or maybe we put some flowers or maybe this uh, uh, turmeric and kumkum or do some other ritual rites no 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 it's not like that every sentence every word what i got in the vedas they are 100% rational and scientific far ahead of the modern science this i'm uh, stressing the stencil business what i explained only for that modern science to reach this level it may require many centuries mm. compared to vedic science the science what i got in the modern day laboratory it is it is <coughs> i call it infancy still it's infancy but this is most developed what i got in the vedas Hmm. take this example what i am telling this garbhadana samskara and other things uh, it's very difficult for the modern science even to imagine about it because it has got that mental and spiritual dimension they don't have that mental and spiritual dimension it's a challenge hmm. it's not i'm just boasting about it even if i talk to a doctor who is working or a person a scientist who is working in genetic engineering and i speak all those things they will say yes this is wonderful 
my experience. So I'll give one just example and uh, this will take next time. Tuhi Devam Savitara will take it next time. Mm. That is 6.1.1. Okay. So I will explain my experience. I was giving a lecture in a senior citizens forum once. So senior citizens forum, uh, they are all seniors. That's uh, They are all 60 plus, 70 plus. And among them, there are many doctors also. Who had served in different hospitals, who had served in different laboratories for uh, decades. So such people were also there. But I was not clear, very aware of uh, the background of every uh, audience there. Audience there. Okay, I was speaking about this Vedic things and this Garbhadana Samskara and I was telling the quality of sperm, ovum, this and that, so many things. And at the end, when there was that question and answer session, then one lady stood up and she said, Okay, what I said about uh, sperm and ovum, it's all excellent. Uh, I agree with all those things. The explanation was very scientific and fine. But to the modern day science, that's what she said, to the modern day science, what you are told is obsolete. Mm. Is obsolete. Doesn't fit in. Mm. Because in the modern day, we don't need a sperm, we don't need a ovum for generation. Even if you get a piece of DNA, from that piece of DNA, I can create. That's what we are calling it as cloning. Mm. Dolly. Dolly is the sheep they cloned. Mm. For creating Dolly, I never had a sperm, I never had a woman. A piece of DNA is sufficient from which I can grow the other replica. So that cloning when it is there, whatever you have said about sperm and worm is totally irrelevant there. Hmm. You said Veda is for all times. It holds good for all times. But this doesn't hold. That was a challenge she said. And finally, she said, I am a retired gynecologist. Mm. You see? I am not a doctor, I am not a gynecologist either. What I have done is, I have studied Vedas. But that was her challenge. Okay. What you have said doesn't hold. I am mm. a retired gynecologist. I have been working on this for many decades. So, naturally, I should have been... Uh, 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 what do you say? A uh, bold for this. Mm. Then I said, okay, fine, excellent. Now what you have said, I totally agree with you. Now this uh, sperm and ovum business, what I told you, is at the gross level. Is at the gross level, I mm. said. Mm. Is at the gross level and you are speaking at a subtle level. Mm. You are telling at a subtle level, I am speaking at a gross level. Mm. Okay, let me explain the same thing to you in the subtle way, I said. Now, this uh, sperm, what we are speaking of, at the physical level, the Vedas refer to it as Pitru Shakti. That is at the subtle level. That Pitru Shakti is there in that sperm. And in the womb, what I have got is the Matru Shakti. Because it has got Matru Shakti, we call it as Ovum at the gross level. <laughs> That what is working in that OM is the Matru Shakti, Matru Power. So we have got Pitru Power and Matru Power. So Pitru Power at the gross level I call it as sperm. Matru Shakti at the gross level I call it as OM. Now I go to deeper. I go to the subtle level. Then what I have got in sperm is Pitru Shakti. What I have got in uh, OM is the Matru Shakti. So a creation is possible only when there is only when there is coherence between that Pitru Shakti and Matru Shakti. Hmm. Now, what does Pitru Shakti mean? Pitru Shakti means the creative force. Parakshane. Sorry, a protective force. Hmm. Parakshane. Rakshane is protecting. So, Pitru Shakti is the protective force. It's not just father. It's not just sperm. I'm going deeper into it. Father, sperm and the protective force. That is Pitru Shakti. In the same way, if I go deeper in the other side, it's a mother, it's a ovum and it's a Matru Shakti which is a creative force. 
Hmm. Now, for any creation, maybe at the father mother level, maybe at the sperm ovum level. That's what I am speaking of. Mm-hmm. Maybe at the level what you are speaking of, at the cloning level, there also these two things are required. One is the matra shakti, another one is the pitra shakti. At the cloning level, okay, with DNA, so you create, right? You create something. So what is that creative force? That's what I am calling is matra shakti. Mm-hmm. Now this creative force, what you have done, as it is, cannot develop into a life. it needs protection yeah. so to protect it in your laboratory condition yeah. i'm not speaking of the union between sperm and ovum i'm speaking of the creation at the dna level and at dna level what you have created you have to protect it with some laboratory conditions now what is that protective force called as let's call as pitra shakti so it is subtler thing unless there is a creative thing plus a protective thing the creation will not come out hmm. say so you got all the laboratory conditions where you can protect it but it's not created it's only protective infrastructure but nothing gets come out nothing can come out <coughs> if you create and there is no protective system in the laboratory what will happen the creation will not come hmm. because it has to be protected so at any level even if you are speaking at the level like gynecologist here at the level of a cloning if you are speaking also even there there are two things which are working one is the creative force the other is the protective force only with those two you can do cloning if one of them is missing your cloning is also a failure so there is a subtler level we have to understand hmm. so always for any creation for any life to come out we need two things one is a creative and other one is a protective creative is matra shakti protective is the pitra shakti so vedas are fine but what what level we understand is different for a common man okay oh. father and mother if i say they are fine hmm. say if you want little explanation scientifically we can go to the sperm and ovum level we are speaking at cloning level then i have to go to the level of matra shakti and pitra shakti still it holds good then she said your answer is excellent and i am convinced thank you <laughs> she has a doctor and a gynecologist she accepted it excellent so it depends on the depth to which we go into and the vedas take us to that depth the very word pitra means parakshane that is dhatu protective force then matra shakti it is mata nirmata bhavati that's how they explain nirmata is a creative mata is creative pitra is protective anywhere if you want something to get into existence maybe secondary existence or primary existence as being a primary existence we have got sat satchit satchananda i'm not referring to that later whatever if it has to exist whatever we have to manufacture whatever we have to create it needs these two pitra shakti matra shakti without the two it cannot happen hmm. so there's a basic thing what we have got maybe at one level we call it as uh, sperm ovum father mother male female okay but when you go deep into it still that basic theory of two things coming together creating an existence primary creation i am not referring to that i stress again and again secondary creation if it has come into existence we need this to always at any point on any subject so i explained this then she was so happy yes the level at which veda speaks is so wonderful it is so subtle and so scientific i am convinced and i agree Mm-hmm. it has happened several times on different topics so when the time comes i will give my experiences like that mm-hmm. but the vedic words what we have got if you understand it in the right way then it is up to date up to date i tell you and is 100% scientific and full of stuff mm-hmm. full of stuff it depends how we unveil it 
how we reveal it it depends on that if i myself am ignorant of things mm-hmm. even if it is there i will not be able to explain it mm-hmm. but i have to be up to date and i have to learn so many things and know what is going on everywhere then i am so surprised all those things are already there in this <laughs> that's the beauty of it so just example cloning that's what i explained just now it's already there but the way we have to understand it and explain it is we have to be a bit uh, geared up for that mm. if you are geared up yes we can understand it satyam so many subjects are like this in that vedas i'm so surprised and uh, uh, ashtak ashtak you understand it uh, yes. yeah vismayam uh, so it's like that okay the same experience i'm trying to share it with you mm, and you can also go deep into it understand all those things and reveal so many things for yourself mm. okay uh-huh. enough for the day one one thing sir maji before Tell we disc- the w- the way you explain it the god is one which uh-huh. one i was thinking too because i wo- we all work in the environment where is a different dharma right, right. and right. all that people we are from the one god because that's why we are all same look like it we made out the five elements huh? the physical is the same right if if we think is like you know <coughs> each god is a different and all that stuff each dharma god is a different and all that then maybe they created us different yes it was man who created god differently <laughs> man but actually sachidananda is one sachidananda entity is one it is without beginning without end and i stress it is formless yes but most of the gods what we have created in different religions in different schools of thought most of them they have got form and it is our creation hmm. it is our creation it's all our imagination to be very clear not creation it's our imagination the reality is god is one that is sachidananda sachidananda i have explained yes you can listen to that uh, recording once again yes sachidananda is one and if i say god it means that one sachidananda only mm-hmm. but in practice the concept of sachidananda is not there we think god in form say my god has got uh, one head two hands two legs then raghavanji says oh your god is very uh, primordial my god is having 10 heads 40 hands and 10 legs so it's more powerful than your god then i imagine some other god and give him all the weapons to each hand and another person creates another god and another story that he was able to handle the whole globe on his finger and turn it like a football <laughs> so all such things have become uh, imaginary and cock and bull stories mm. but uh, the reality or element of truth is not at all there in any of them it's only a competition intellectual competition and intellectual creation and imagination illusions fact is one sachidananda you call it by any name mm. in any religion whatever be your belief and not speaking of beliefs i speak of facts belief could be anything you can believe anything believe you are free but whatever we believe need not be the truth but better we realize truth and believe in it that would be excellent mm. that's what we call it as shraddha shrat plus dha shrat is truth dha is having the truth in us shraddha is excellent belief uh, is very dangerous belief faith they are all dangerous seeking truth and making truth our own is excellent that's what vedas always prefer and guide us don't be taken away by beliefs don't be taken away by fiction you discover truth and the quality of truth are the parameters to find out what is truth yes i give you 1 2 3 4 5 6 you verify if it answers all those things that is truth make that truth your own and you believe in truth mm. so to find out what is truth what you need what you have to exercise is called as medha mm. this also i told you once again yes. if you want to can note down shraddhaancha medhaancha shraddhaancha 
मेधांच जात मेधा ह प्रयच्छतु श्रद्धांच मेधांच जात मेधा ह प्रयच्छतु जात मेधा इस सचिदानंद अनदर नेम फॉर जात मेधा दैट इस ऑम्निशियंट जात मेधा मिस वन हो नो साल so that is sachidananda is omniscient shraddhaancha medhaancha jata vedah prayachhatu yachhatu is ya prapane ya prapane is to obtain to get it o oh, sachidananda please best on me shraddha as well as medha we need both it's a combination This is Atharva, nineteen point six four point one. Atharva, nineteen point six four point one. Medha is that power to analyze and to match it with parameters. Hmm. That is Medha, and once with the help of Medha, I have realized the truth. Having belief in that is called shraddha. The first one is the enquiry. Second one is conclusion. Conclusion belief. Belief is not first. I repeat. Because if there is no medha, no enquiry, no seeking for truth, you will just believe. It uh, uh, distills down to blind belief. Hmm. It's not shadha. It is blind belief, <laughs> dogma. That's what we call it, dogma. It's not dogmatic. So you inquire, find the truth, and have belief in it. That becomes shadha. So it's a beautiful balance they have given it. Mm. This in Atharva, nineteen point six four point one. Mere medha, what will happen? Say, so finally, I don't believe in truth. I just go on questioning and questioning and questioning, and I end up in questioning. Then I become a cynic. Cynic is the word what we use. They just go on questioning everything. They finally end up nowhere. But questioning is essential. Till we realize truth, and then we have to shift. We have to reorient. That we have to have belief in truth. Inquiry to truth, we have to tr- get transformed. We have to reorient. Mere questioning is a critic. He goes on criticizing everything. He goes on questioning everything. He never ends up. He never concludes. That is cynicism. We end up somewhere and say yes, this is truth, and start believing it and adopting it. Then we become shadha one. Medhavan, Shadhavan. Hmm. It's a beautiful thing. The balance they have given that is in uh, Atharva nineteen sixty four point one. This is a fantastic mantra. Is, yeah. Is yes. Without Shraddha, Medha is not Medha is not there. Then Medha doesn't work. work yes. Without Medha, Shraddha will not work. Yes. There is a beautiful balance between the two. Both are required. Hmm. Have an open mind. Search for truth. Medha. Once you realize truth. Adopt it and make it your own. That is shadha. Then life becomes beautiful. So that's the what you call uh, the chemistry they are telling about uh, making the life beautiful. Fine. I will stop at this. Maybe a few more things are there. We will discuss in the next session. And uh, whatever I said about this genetic engineering, I request you to consult some people who are working in genetic engineering and ask them to listen to this. And please give me a feedback about their expression. Definitely, and I'm sure it will be positive. <coughs> <coughs> what I mean to say is, don't just take what I have said. Okay. Don't believe it as it is. You cross check, cross verify, mm-hmm. and they will be able to contribute something more to this or accept this as very subtle and very wonderful what is said in the Vedas. Mm. It will be a great revelation for you and for me again and again. Mm. Mm. Please do it. You discuss with those people who are working in the field, 
latest state of the art position they know and you tell them about this they should be able to appreciate it please do it and give me the feedback okay thank you dhanyawad namaste namaste